welcome to the NPS Show, episode number 204. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Oh, it's great to be back, Norman. Hey, hey, Kyle. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I've missed the show, man. It's, it's felt a bit odd not being here for the last two weeks. Two? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So, where were you? Like, I okay, it's a lie if I asked you where were you because I knew. So, you went to <laughs> Hearts of Con, right? Yes, I went there on uh, uh, last weekend actually, and it was it was an absolute blast. I I kind of got convinced uh, convinced to go last minute by uh, two friends, and some I didn't realize I was going to actually commit to buying the tickets. I kind of like I was going like, oh, should I go? I might go. I'll think about it. you know like you know when you think like you know someone invites you something and you go. I'll see what I can do. And you kind of got there at the back of your head that you're probably not going to go, but you'll like maybe look at a site or something, you know. That's what you're thinking. And then I start researching it and I keep bringing it up. And it's like, mm, I could do it. I could get the money. I could potentially do that. It's not far away. I could do a wee bit of a holiday. And like, you know, it slowly builds up. And finally I decide, right, you know what? I'm going to buy a ticket to the convention. I ended up buying the last one. Oh, really? Yeah, the act- I actually bought the last weekend ticket to the Half Warming Con, which was, um, you know, all tickets limited, whatever. So I bought a ticket, didn't think much of it, and started working on getting the planes in the hotel. Mm-hmm. But then they announced on their Facebook page right afterwards, oh, our tickets are sold out. And I immediately commented on it going, I think I might have bought the last ticket. <laughs> what did they say? They said, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> they had my name. They knew it was me. <laughs> So you're the culprit. <laughs> I am the culprit. I am the one. If you were looking to get a last minute ticket to the con, I'm the reason you didn't get it. I can only apologise. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Well, at least you have fun. So before we officially start the show, you need to let the people know that it's just going to be us both. Ro is not here because reasons. And so is James because of reasons. I got no idea what they are. But anyway, you still have us goobers on the show, and probably next week you'll have a guest. I'm not going to announce who we got because usually when I do that, they kind of flick. So anyway, um, next week's guest is going to be a mystery, and I hope that person does come on because it's going to be fun. So anyway, Kyle, Hearts Warming Con experience, tell us, man, like make us jelly. All right, well. I went to the main convention on the Saturday and the Sunday. I didn't actually, there was a pancake pavilion on the Friday, which sadly I wasn't able to go to, which I heard good things about. Uh, I heard the food there was great and all the rest of it. But the convention itself was absolutely fantastic. I went there with, um, with James actually. I was there with him and with, um, a few other friends. And yeah, it was a fantastic uh, experience. It was held at the, um, I've got to be careful how I pronounce this, the, Falker Community Center. <laughs> ah, so you went to yeah. that location. <laughs> I went to that location. Trust me, I had to say that for an episode of Creative Vibes that's coming out like very soon, and I had to be very careful how I said that because I could have very much gotten an off safe for work conversation with, with Sugar Dove that happens. Uh, let me see, because if I do remember right, you had James and Yon on that show, right? Ah, yes, I did, and that should be... Well, actually, by the time this episode comes out, that episode will be out, because they both come out on the same day, in a great bit of scheduling. <laughs> Yay! Harps Warming Con are going to be fantastic. Oh, we yeah. mentioned two podcasts. Mm. Can you believe it? If you want to get a comprehensive discussion about the con, go listen to Creative Wives, because, well, we were supposed to get a comprehensive coverage of that con, but James is not here, so you'll get a one-sided <laughs> conversation with... Kyle and me going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, but I'll give you some of the highlights. I mean, firstly, I mean, obviously the biggest highlight of the convention, aside from Emmy Larson, because that kind of, that's very obviously the highlight, was the charity auction, oh. which um, which are always great fun. I did, I was at the charity auction at um, Brony Scott as well in November, and coincidentally I did buy stuff at both. But at this, but at this charity auction, because I had a lot of money, because I sold some stuff to make sure I had spending money, I decided to just go wild in the auction and keep driving up prices as I was going through all the items. Oh God. You, so you, you were one of those people that jack up the price just for funds, eh? Well, I was wanting to, I wanted to leave with some nice stuff, and it was, I thought, oh well, I'll put some bids in. There were one or two things that, that interested me, and I did actually win something. I won a, a signed CD by, um, oh, I'm gonna pronounce the name wrong. Is it Jace Rowe? J Y C R O W, Joyce Rowe. I've never heard that person before. Great musician, lovely guy, absolutely lovely. 
well worth checking out his stuff. But um, yeah, I got a CD from him. And by the way, if you're li- if you happen to listen to this, I do apologise if I pronounce your name wrong. I do really apologise. I'm used to the names at the best of times. Do you know the song Norman? Um, Video killed the radio star. Oh yeah, I remember them because uh, if I do remember right, there's a cover parody song uh, by a guy I know. So yeah, I've heard the song before. Yeah, well, the band that did it was a band called the Buggles, right? Mm-hmm. And which I, but when you see the name the Buggles, when you see it typed out, it doesn't look like it should be sound se- said that way. I, I think I used to call them the Bugles or something, <laughs> or the, the the Buggles or something. I, do, I came up with something really weird for it, and it's like it's the same thing. Like I think it's with any music act, unless I hear the name a hundred times, I will end up mispronouncing it. I'll find some way of getting it wrong. Uh, I understand, man. It's like one of those groups where they have a strange name. And they're well known for their strange names, that's why. Like, you remember uh, the movie that, I forgot what the movie's called, but they got a hit song called That Thing You Do. Oh, that, I love that one. Yeah, that I've got that film. I, my dad and I obsess over the song. It's one of our favourites. Yeah. yeah, the band was... Um, the was Wonders. Called the Wonders, but the way they spelt it was... O N E D E R S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way they spell it was just like different, but people called them the one zeros or something. I don't remember. The Oneeders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Oneeders. <laughs> Which is great because it's like that was like for the whole like first half of the film. They keep getting called the Oneeders, and then at one point, was it the the second guitarist Lenny, who's like the sort of comic relief in the film? He's speaking to like this restaurant owners, and he's and the restaurant owners going a. Eh, you know, the word is out on you, Needers, and he just goes, hey, that's all Needers. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just done with the name. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how you roll with it. So, besides that, like, how was the trip? Like, give us a play-by-play from starting to end. All right. Well, we started off, well, for me, anyway, I was flying away from um, Inverness, my hometown, to Amsterdam. And the uh, plane got delayed for an hour, but I had a nice wee drink while I was in the, the duty freeze. That kept me going. And it was a bit of an unusual thing for me, because this was my first trip to a con by myself. And it was my first trip internationally for about five years, five, six years. So it's um, it was a bit daunting for me, kind of going on that plane by myself. You know, I was panicking about everything going to have the ticket, to have the passport, is the passport in dates? Am I getting on the right plane? Am I going to the right country? <laughs> you know, like, I was thinking of everything that could go wrong. Oh, yeah, that, that's not fun. By the way, you need to have a passport to go there? Uh, yeah, you need a passport mm-hmm. to go international, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Because I thought, like, the European Union kind of had an agreement where you don't need passports or something like that. Uh, it's something like if you're traveling through the EU and you live in like the mainland EU, I think you've got like an ID card, mm-hmm. whereas in the UK we don't have ID cards, we just have passports. Mm, all right, all right. So, so I think that's where the, um, the distinction is. But I got to Amsterdam and, um, oh, by the way, actually a little tip for anyone who's going through Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam and it's, it's a very big place. It is a bit of a nightmare to go around. I mean, it's very well signposted, but it's, it's huge. It's quite daunting if you're not used to this sort of thing. If you happen to have a modern phone, little tip for you, download the official Schiphol Airport app because if you're going to, um, like, yes, if you need to catch a flight there, if you put in your little booking reference, it will tell you what uh, what departure area to go to, what check-in disc, what number it is. It'll tell you precisely where to go and it'll update, update a map on where you are in relation to where you've got to go. It is brilliant. It saved my life on the, the return journey. Oh, that's cool. And you also got a new phone then. So that's cool too. Oh, yeah. I bought a new phone for the convention. I bought myself an Apple uh, iPhone 5S. I have actually bought my first ever Apple product. <laughs> so it's, uh, I've been getting used to this because my old phone is... Um, quite an ancient piece of technology you know it takes phones it has one game on it mm-hmm. this is like oh it's touch screen and i've got my social media so i was constantly like, throughout the whole weekend i was uploading photos to my um my writer's facebook page and like sort of going like look at what's happening at the convention mm-hmm. look at what's the meeting look at all this and it's like oh good lord this, this was such a good fan i'm enjoying this all right. so uh, yeah the phone has uh stolen my heart a wee bit <laughs> yeah, all right all right but, uh, but yeah so i arrived at amsterdam i met up with jan and our friend corner edgy and um, they rescued me from a Starbucks in the airport because I had no idea where I was going. So wait, um, Jan, Jan's a local there, right? Uh, yeah, he lives in the, the Netherlands, I. But he lives at the other end of it. Oh, and so does Corner or does he have... No? Corner is from Finland, I believe. Oh, yeah. But still, like, you get, you, you get to meet them. Like, I'm jelly. Like, I'd, I want to meet them too if they get the chance. Oh, you'd love them. They're absolutely lovely people. I mean, everyone there. I mean, the group of the group of us that all had it together were myself, Jan, Corner, James Cork, and Sketchy Sounds. 
and we spent most of our days together and it was just a brilliant laugh we had a really good time together you know we had dinner together and breakfast and hang around at the con did all sorts of things together i mean and it was great enjoying the convention with each other and just sort of catching each other at different points because then on the saturday when we got we actually went to the convention uh obviously had the various events and panels on uh on all sorts of different topics. Um, sadly, I didn't get to see many of them because I did spend most of my time at the karaoke machine. <laughs> what? You were hanging out on the karaoke machine? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a karaoke machine. Me and Sketchy did a version of Smile, Smile, Smile. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. It was great because they had, um, they had a, it was like a, they had a karaoke machine with full of, um, pony related songs. Let me guess. Show, like, it was random. from My Little Karaoke. Maybe I, I couldn't say off the top of my head. I don't think I ever saw the name of the program. It was something that had been built for it. So I, I, yeah, I'd be I think it's this. them because they do enjoy going to conventions and just setting up shop there. It's pretty cool. It was great fun. They also had dance machines as well, which sadly I didn't get the chance to use. <laughs> but I think if I did wear my Doc Martens, I would have actually fallen through the floor. But there was loads to do there. The vendors, there were a good variety of vendors there, all sorts of great people. Um, sadly, they were all crammed in very much. I mean, the building was not the um, best space, I think, in terms of um, the scale of it. They, they used their space as much as they could, but it was jammed to the rafters. Yeah, I'm and, guessing uh, that they were not expecting the amount of people that they got. Uh, I couldn't say. I mean, I, I imagine they were very happy with what they did get, uh, especially since it's all down tickets. But... Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, obviously the vendors just didn't get as much space as they perhaps would have liked for their, for their art and their wares, but there were all sorts of great things there. We actually made friends actually with one of the vendors there because we met her coincidentally on the shuttle bus oh. from the airport to our hotel because we just ran for it because I think we we're having to pick up Sketchy or James. I can't remember which one uh, it was. All right. And uh, she came on with us, um, a vendor called Violet Rose, who were uh, we've fast becoming friends with actually we're now all on Skype together Yay. and she does little plushies um, of ponies and whatnot and she was doing them in the hotel and at the convention centre while she was you know selling her wares she was actually making more and really good personality really good fan we had dinner with her a few times it, it was great you know and it was nice meeting her and to meet some of the other people there as well where's she from? she is from oh crikey she's been all around the world I think she's Right, I'm going to get this wrong. You, you have to invite her on the show, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I want to know. Like, where is she from? Like, uh, the UK or... She is from... I think she's from Australia. Oh. Lives in America. Now, currently in Britain. Oh, wow. She travels a lot. Yeah, she's she's done a fair bit. Uh, you have to ask her the full story. I, I, she's been around the block a fair bit. I mean, and... Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> and she was a great personality and, you know, a really good laugh. And, you know, what was that? At the end of the convention on the Sunday, it was great that we were able to actually... um spend the night together, all five or six of us. It, oh, actually, seven of us, actually, because there was also, um, oh, what's his name? I've forgotten the poor guy's name. Um, oh, it's one of Sketchy's friends as well. Um, I've forgotten his Hezo? name. He's not sure. I can't remember. I'm so sorry if you happen to watch this and, you've, and you're and you wondering, hey, that dude's forgot my name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure, I'm sure Sketchy or James will correct uh, <laughs> next week. But we, there were seven of us playing uh, Twilight Sparkles, uh, oh, Secret Ship that. Deck. Oh, how was it? Because you and me tried to play that game on Tabletop Simulator and we got no idea how to play it. I figured out entirely how to play it and, oh good lord, it <laughs> is uh, it is designed for the lols completely. <laughs> it's great fun. <laughs> All right, you, you need that. to teach me how to play that game later on, man. So I will show you. So after that, what happened? Like uh, That was well, just around the... Uh, well, that... Well, that game was a we did one on Saturday as well we did that on the Sunday night but the convention obviously was two days and there were just a variety of odds and ends going on that I was at the Buck Legacy Workshop learning about the game and I finally bought a copy so I know how to play it now Um there was a variety of panels going on music panels voice actor panels the Emmy Larson panel Um there were workshops to uh, show you how to build cupcakes and how to make plushies uh, which I rewatched really to do the plushy one, but sadly it was completely booked out, so I didn't get a chance to see it. By the way, did you get to ask Larson a question? Uh, I didn't actually. Do you know something? I actually missed the uh, Larson um, talk Aww. section because um, I, I don't know where I was. I know it was somewhere in the convention. I think I might have been too busy looking at some ponies upstairs because there was a lot catching my eye at the point. But there was a lot kind of happening at the same time, like the scheduling-wise. Mm. So um, 
at the same time as the Emily Larson was on, there was about three or four different other things. Oh, yeah, understandable. But if you do get a chance to meet Larson in person or online or whatever, just so you guys know that we are shields for him. We like to shield his product. So coming on June 14th, his second book, The Shadow Cadets of Penny Royal Academy, will be out. So go and buy it on Amazon.com. <laughs> Oh, yes. And his first book was there at the convention, actually. I oh. uh, signed copies of it. I almost got the last copy, but there was someone else there who, just after me, really wanted the book that I could tell. So I just kind of let him have it and just, and I walked away. I didn't, I said, unfortunately, I never got a chance to get his book because I was hoping to read that on the flight back. Oh. But, um, but no, um, he was there. He was very humorous, uh, particularly during the charity auction where one night he was given away, which he didn't tell, I, I get the impression he didn't tell the organisers about was a signed waffle. <laughs> Which I think went for about 30 or 40 euros and promptly got <clears throat> eaten. Oh god. Mm. Not only eaten by the person who bought it, but then Emmy Larson came out halfway through and actually ate a bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, uh, that's Larson. <laughs> yep, so, you know, credit for credit is due. The guy's got a humorous side. Yeah, man, like, I wish I could have been there. Like, I personally think he's an awesome dude and just hanging out with him just talking to him would be awesome like i wonder if he remembers me or not <laughs> oh hey you never know he seems like the sort of person that would remember i mean he's got like i said he was he was in great form and actually everyone there was absolutely fantastic there were all sorts of great um wee events going on and there was also um on the game side i never got a chance to play this i was really hoping i would just so i could feel badly they were also doing a uh, pony jeopardy Ooh. which was really good fun to watch are you familiar with Jeopardy, the um, TV show? Jeopardy, if I'm not mistaken, the game is you have to ask a question for the answer? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's like, basically what happens is, yeah, like, there's um, question topics ranging from 100 to 500 points. You pick the certain points and it will give you the answer in, or something you've got to answer in the form of a question. So it's like, for example, the 500 points question for background pony had a picture, right? And you've got to say what the pony was. <coughs> And the 500 points question for that category was Applejack, <laughs> which immediately got the room roaring like <laughs> mad. Uh, which is the best background pony? Applejack. <laughs> oh, I I win this game. This game is fun. <laughs> I know it was it was great fun. The the pony Jeopardy. They did it on both days, and it was absolutely brilliant fun to to watch and sadly i never got to see um the music performance on sunday because i was ridiculously tired after party for the con um i'd lost my ticket stub for my jacket so I, I spent a few hours panicking trying to figure out how to get it so how did you get the jacket back man uh i waited until the guy that i had been speaking to who couldn't find it left wait <laughs> and then someone you came along Aww. asked if i could have a look find the jacket and managed to get, oh, get my stuff well at least you got your back your stuff back like uh oh, not fun not fun i know but i i missed the the music convention i know sketchy was there performing um from what i gathered the only negative point that about the con in any way shape or form was the venue itself and mm. uh, partially it was cramped the top floor of the building where they had like the buck legacy workshop they did pony jeopardy there on sunday artists um drawing section, cupcakes and the plushies and whatnot, all done in this top floor. The place had no insulation at all. It was like a fridge freezer. Wait, freezer? I thought it would be hot. No, no. Huh. Not even close. It, it, listen, you, if you went in that room, you would have actually believed the heat does not rise because <laughs> it was not going up there. Okay, well, I thought if a room jam-packed with people would cause heat. Yeah, what you think, but even, I, I mean, I kid you not, there was like 30, 40 people in that room. The temperature didn't go above seven. Wow. <laughs> well, so at it, least you're not hot and sweaty. No, 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 that's true, that's true. Um, the only other thing I've heard, and this is, um, you can speak to sketchy about this and see if you can get more detail, but um, I think uh, the acoustics in the building weren't fantastic. Like, I noticed that when we were doing the karaoke, like, sound did not travel that well. Uh, well... Well, the karaoke machine is give what you take, but for the performance, that's something else. Like, I got no idea, not a musician, so don't really know. Yeah, unfortunately, that isn't my field either. But the thing was, apart from those minor niggles, the event itself was brilliant. I mean, the people there were fantastic. There were loads of great wares. We all had a good time. There were three waffles for everyone, <laughs> which was really tasty. Yeah. And, you know, it was just a nice friendly atmosphere it was a great con and um 
it was a great experience for me. I'm glad that Jan and James convinced me to actually go last minute to it because it was a fantastic experience, one that I actually needed. Wow, I wish I could have joined, but like I mentioned before, did I mention to you before that money is not good and location is very, very far for me? I know. I feel, I feel sorry for you, Norman, that you're so far away. It'd be great to actually meet up somewhere at some point and yeah, actually hang yeah, out. And Probably, I'm hope, I'm hoping for next year, if I have the extra cash, probably either at Hearts Homing or either um, Brony Scott. Oh, that'd be brilliant. It'd be great to have you there. The goal is to try and get all the Bronies to Scotland. That's the plan. Get you all here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could try and see. Like, I don't know. I mean, just hearing about the convention scenario, just look, hearing about how people are just meeting up, it's just much fun. Like, I wish I could go, but I don't have the cash. That's all. If I do have the cash, I do have the extra money and stuff, I would go to each and every con. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, exactly. It'd be great to go to the mall. I mean, it's, I kid you not, um, when I was at the convention, I saw a leaflet, and I've actually got over here, I'll just pick it up, for the, I think this is new, actually, the uh, Swiss Ponycon, hmm. which is, I believe, in the French uh, portion of Switzerland, from what I can gather from the, which is apparently on the 5th and 6th of November, so um, I'm curious to see how that one goes once the website develops a bit more, because it's um, still in a sort of beta phase. Mm, understandable, understandable. So what about swags? What do you get? Oh, well, I tell you what, I've got a variety of things. I'll actually, I've actually, i actually still got them in my suitcase here, so let me just lift this up. Right, I have got, well, for example, I've got some very nice posters here of, unfortunately I can't really show them off, I've got posters of Pinkie Pie, Applejack and Derpy, which are brilliant. Um, unfortunately, the artist's name isn't on them, so I can't oh, uh, yeah. say who, they, who did it, sadly, but... The art is brilliant. Please keep in. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to find them at some point online. I'll be able to actually tell you who they are. But yeah, I got a variety of prints uh, and things like that. I got, um, oh, give me a sec. Oh, sorry, I've got so many odds and ends. I've got the CD that I mentioned earlier on. I got some great um, cider coasters oh, wow. um, with uh, with artwork designed by uh, Cheetah Gonzita. Which are which are absolutely fantastic. It's got the main six. It's like you flip them over. <clears> three <throat> coasters, two characters in each. Mm-hmm. Which is absolutely fantastic. Nice. Um, got loads of key rings. Uh, I got badges. I've got lots of little sort of knickknacks, art prints, and odds and ends. But there are actually two. Oh wait, hang on. Oh, how can I forget Brayburn? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you posted it up on your Facebook. Oh yes, I got the Brayburn plushie. I I was determined I was going to leave with one. I had a choice between getting a Brayburn or I was going to head up to the custom plushie people upstairs and get a. Is it Trouble Shoes? Trouble Shoes, the big pony guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to get him, but I had a choice between spending 25 euros or 170, and I'd realised, actually, you know what, I need to keep the money. But yeah, actually, I'll tell you what, two greatest things that I got, actually, be in complete, absolute honesty, are actually quite personal gifts, actually. They were really great. The first, actually, came from James, actually. He came up with a beautiful... Um, I never knew he was going to do this. A selection of uh, prints that he'd done uh, and artwork he'd done for myself, Sketchy, Corner, Yawn, uh, of like artwork of our characters and like prints as well. Like it was a big sort of art gift. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And so it's like he did like a, he, he gave me a, a professional print of the customized piece that I asked him to do last year, myself with Sugar Dove for Creative Vibes. So I've got a print of that. I've got one of the Mere Do Well picture that he did, um, one of um, Queen Chrysalis and Under the Spell, um, and one that I cannot remember what movie this is. It's the one of the white pony with music notes around him and big orange hands, if that helps you. No, I don't remember, but still, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and he also did a, a sketch of me as well <laughs> with a microphone going, and now for our next guest, <laughs> which is a beautiful piece, so that absolutely blew me away. I did not expect that. And it was, uh, I mean, a lot of this convention was me just getting kind of shocked by things happening, you know. And the, the other thing that I got, actually, and, and this one, I also shared this on Facebook for those who happen to see this, but I actually got, like, this really surprised me. I actually got um, fan art for Creative Vibes. Oh, by who? Uh, by uh, a great guy called Red, uh, Red Wing, mm. who... Um, had watched the show and I'd seen one or two Skype chats recently with the Man Munch Connects group mm. um, who had recently discovered Creative Vibes and um, 
I knew he was going to be at the convention because he mentioned me beforehand. So it's like, oh, hey, look, I look forward to seeing you in the flesh and all the rest of it. And uh, absolutely loved the guy, brilliant guy. And he gave me this picture. Um, and it, and it, the tech, it, right, it's got a picture of a microphone with a pair of red lips beside it. And it, the tech says, somewhere in the Scottish Highlands, there is a pair of floating lips behind my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> That's Kyle McCall. <laughs> How did that go? How? Oh, that was... That was brilliant. Clearly, he's been watching Creative Creative Vibes because that's the reoccurring joke. <laughs> but that was I could I did not expect that. So it's like when he pulled it out, I thought he was going to show me like a print he'd bought upstairs because he was talking about that. Mm-hmm. And so when he gave that to me, it, I kid you not, it, it really honestly blew me away. So it, I, you know, that, sorry, I'm getting all mushy. It's yeah, like it's genuine, good, it was a, it was a it was a you know it was absolutely lovely of him. So I yeah. <laughs> Well, what else can I say? Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Like, I'm jelly because I wish I could have gone there and, well, me two guys had the same fun. But, uh, unfortunately for me, I had to do stuff and work. Oh, don't worry, man. We'll get you to a con soon. Yeah. Hope so, man. Hope so. But anyway, talking about work, we have a show to do and we have news. Oh, yes, we do indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeedy. So, first news. Funko's Maimoji figures appear for pre-order on Entertainment Earth. So, if you guys don't know, it seems that Funko has this new product, something related to emojis, but pony form and other product stuff. So, here it is. You can pre-order it on Entertainment Earth. So, what do you think, man? Like, this is just... Wow. I kid you not, I saw the picture of them, and they are fantastic. And you can see how they resemble the emojis. So, I'm looking at other brands, like from Batman to Five Nights at Freddy's, to what's this? Um, the minions from Despicable Me's. So there are a lot out there, and they look like stress balls. But it could be other things too, like wall, like they have a plush version of the Batman's. So that's cool. Oh, definitely. I mean, the toys look absolutely great. It's just that, I kid you not. I'm looking at one of Rarity right now with her mouth wide open, and I swear she's going to eat me. <laughs> it depends on which version you get, my friend. <laughs> But they do look absolutely great, and I can see um, people trying to collect them to get the the full set because they do look lovely. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that they do look like they should also be jump scares and Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> well, there's a Five Nights at Freddy versions of it. Oh, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> and they're plush. That's cute. I do want to get Freddy. The the Freddy one looks cute. So well, that's up for grabs if you are interested in it. But I don't know when they're going to come out. All I know is the pre-orders out there. So that's good. Oh, they even have the Game of Thrones. That's cool. So yeah, plush out there, minifigures, I don't know what you call them, but toys, they're out there, they're cute. And I think they're new from Funko. So if you're interested in getting them, well, uh, expect to see them in Hot Topic or so on. So Kyle, have you watched all the Pony episodes yet? I'm actually just about there. I was rushing to get through as much of Season 5 as I could before the convention. I got just over halfway through the fifth season, so I'm getting there. So I will be actually done by the time, hopefully, season six starts, depending on when it starts. Ah, I see. Well, according to Google, the first two episodes are going to come out this month on the 26th, and it's confirmed by Hasbro or Discovery that it's coming on the 26th. Yeah, because wasn't it maybe May? That was the first thing we heard, I'm sure. It's either or. They say that it's going to be out during the summer, was it? Uh, oh, so, or late spring or something like that. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, the the dates for the season seem to be a bit... Because I know I got weeks back we said it was going to be May or somewhere in that region. We mentioned the uh, month. All they say that it was after winter. What's after winter, by the way? Well, no, it didn't, we did an episode called The Hiatus Ends May. Oh, yeah. I don't <laughs> know. Which was just three episodes ago. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. It could be but either or. It's coming out this month on the 26th. So what, that leaves us with about 19 or 20 days away, give or take. So yeah, we've got a couple of weeks to go if, if they actually decide to stick to the States and not shunt it around somewhere else. Oh no, they're sticking to it, man. They're sticking to it. Are they actually going to stick to this one? Are they actually going to stick to it? Okay, right. Let's it's, it's, it's make sure they stick. Let's make sure it stays in concrete. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've been I've been really enjoying season five. I've, I mean, I know um, 
last year when people were talking about it, you know, I've heard some people talking about particular episodes that were fantastic, and I've heard some people say that the the season as a whole wasn't um, that great. I've heard some negative things about it, but actually, be nasty, because uh, because then how fast I had to go through like the first half of the season, you know, and last of the episodes, I thought it was actually a pretty quality series. You know, series. Where are you at now, my friend? I am. Oof. I'm. So I think I'm on ep- I'm about to watch episode 103. I think I'm right about there. So I'm after the episode with the Yetis. Oh, uh, okay. not well, not the Yetis, but you know the Yeti-like creatures coming in to the Yaks, right? The Yaks, yes. Yeah. So well, uh, I think that's around the first half of season five. Technically, the first half of season five, according to people, were pretty good, but the second half was a bit meh. Well, I will see what it's like when I get to it, mm-hmm. and uh, I will reserve judgment till then. Mm-hmm. But so far, I've been really enjoying it, and it certainly, you know, I felt it was going back to form. So it's, um, you know, or maybe it's just because I'm really getting to my uh, my poniness in the last month or so that, you know, with everything going on, it's been kind of like, you know, doing MBS, creative vibes, the conventional, it's like I'm surrounded by pony. <laughs> all right, all right. But... Um, do catch up, man, because season six is going to come out soon. So you'll be there on the hype train, waiting every week, watching live streams and whatnot. Oh, I know. I'll be right there going, oh, look at the ponies. <laughs> and you'll be seeing the, the ads, like pancakes, there's pancakes ads, and also car insurance ads, and also other ads for things we don't need in our life, but they force them our throats. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, exactly. But I'll be looking forward to that. It'll be good fun to... I should be there at the start of the season again, having caught up, because I haven't done that since season three. Oh, yeah. It'll be fun, man. It'll be fun. So, the 26th of March. So, it's coming soon. So, that's awesome. Can't wait. It's been a while. And poor Silver, he does need to catch up on all those episode reviews. (laughs) Aw. Yep. But at least we got content to review. So, that's good. All stuff, right? It'll keep the MBS show very busy. Yep. Very, very busy. Very busy. So anyway, uh, that's the news for this weekend. Well, we have been dragging on a bit. Kyle has told his story, covered the news, and there's no guest for this week. Um, next week, like I mentioned, we're going to have a guest. But what I didn't mention is that for the regular show that we're doing now, I'm going to go for a different flow of format where um, one week we don't have a guest, the other week we'll try to have a guest, and so on. We're going to try and do it that way and hope that it keeps consistent for as long as this show keeps on. Oh, Brian, hey, it sounds like a great plan. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hard not to get a guess. So this way, it'll give me the way to try and find someone and whatnot. And also, well, it gives Sweetie Bot some time to relax on her weekends. So other than that, I think that's about it. Oh, one thing I need to mention before we... And last week, email time, there was one email directed to you, Kyle. And oh, right. that email mentioned, how many video games do you have in your collection? We tried to answer, but we didn't give a solid answer because, well, we're <laughs> not you. <laughs> well, I don't know the precise number myself. I think if I actually counted them all, I would probably have my head explode. But I can uh, tell you that across all the consoles and systems and all the things that I've got throughout the room, I have got at least 2,000 games. <laughs> and that's physical copies. That's not wow. downloads. Wow. But okay, here's the thing. like You just mentioned 2K worth of titles, but you have a website or you have this kind of group that you have. It's called Retro oh, yes. Collection. And on your user page, you listed the collection of games that you're collecting. And the first one up on top is the Microsoft Xbox original, and you have 100%, and that's 772 out of 772 games for it. Yeah, that was that was a long time coming, that one. I mean, it's, um, yeah, Retro Collect is a great website uh, for those who like collecting retro video games or just talking about them. It's, it's very similar to Facebook in style, very easy to pick up and use, and you can also track the games you've got and like take them off the list, and it'll tell you what percentage of games you got for the system, what ones you're missing, how rare they are, that sort of thing. So it's an absolutely great website. The Xbox Collection, I didn't mean to collect for it. It didn't actually, like, I kid you not, the first 200 games kind of came out of nowhere. Because <laughs> it's like, I managed to find them so cheaply in Inverness, um, in like uh, second-hand stores, like for 50 pence or a pound. So it's like, you, you see 
you know, 20 games, it costs you 10 or 20 pounds and you go, right, that's fine. You know, that's a good deal. So you don't think about it. You just get a new pile of games. And then suddenly you've got loads of piles of games and you count them up and you go, oh, goodness sake, I've got 200 games. I've actually now nearly gone a third of the way to the collection. I wonder how many more I could get this cheaply. And you keep going. And before you know it, you're buying shelves and shelves and shelves and you're getting rid of all space and it's slowly enclosing on me like I'm in like some sort of old action flick where like you know you're trapped in you know it's like india jones and temple of doom the walls are closing in and the ceiling's coming down <laughs> on the retro collector's website it says that you have about uh 1807 games aye but that view that you've got of there is just of the european titles ah okay so it's like if you include american systems like the panasonic 3do uh, Virtual Boy, Neo Geo systems, all that sort of thing. It bumps up a lot. Like for the 3DO here at my feet, I've got about 130 odd games. Wow. Okay, so. And, 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 yes, it's like when you kind of suffer systems, suddenly it just shuts up. <laughs> well, collecting console games are just fun. You know, it's fun. I don't know what to say. There's a lot of uh, fun to be had with collecting stuff. Collecting games is great fun. I mean, it's been my passion for years now, um, ever since um, a store called Game Station opened up in Inverness back in, it must have been 2004 or somewhere about then. And I probably discovered, you know, systems like the Dreamcast and the Mega Drive again. I was able to actually explore these things that I never had before. I enjoyed the fact of being able to play games that I missed the first time round or that most people missed. And just to delight in something new. It's great playing modern games. I love modern games a lot. You know, they're absolutely brilliant fun. I mean, I've only just completed Fallout 4. That has kept me busy for ages, and there's this War of Mine as well, which is an absolutely brilliant game. And, and the Wii U, of course, we have to mention the Wii U. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. It's nice going back to, like, like say, the original Xbox and playing something like Call of Cthulhu, or playing the original Halo, or um, or any of the multiplayer platform titles as well. Like, you know, there's there's just so many great games for it, and the Xbox got a really good mix of them. Hmm, true that, I mean, true that. It depends on the person itself like for me i do want to try and okay i won't say i'm going to try and collect all the games but i just want to have fun like get games that i really want to play there's an emulator for it but sometimes emulators are hard work just to get it running because you've got no idea what you need to have and stuff and it's just a hassle like if you get a console just plug it in hope it works and boom there it is Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm not a big fan of emulators myself. This is maybe down to a degree of snobbiness. You know, I do like the idea of having it on, like, I'm, I'm going to sound like a bit of a hipster, but having it on the original hardware and just enjoying it. And, you know, it's, there's something quite special about having four friends around in your bedroom, sitting on the bed. I bet you play, you know, four player on Halo or something. You know, it's just absolutely great fun. I understand, I understand. Like, sometimes, like, the Mega Drive, there's an old game called X-Men, something I don't remember, but it's an X-Men game where it asks you to reset the system. That means you need to press the blue button. On a emulator, I don't think it will work the same way. Oh, I can't remember much about X-Men on Mega Drive. I never really played it. But um, the game that I remember on the Mega Drive that I still hold incredibly dear today, and it's a bit of an old title, it's just um, it's PGA Tour Golf 3. Really? Because, yeah, because I remember being around at my aunt and uncle's many, many moons mm. ago, I must have been about like five or six, I kind of age, and they had a Mega Drive, and I remember my dad and him and me playing on this, and I have incredibly warm memories of that game, <laughs> and the music, like the music in the menu, you know, every time I hear it, it's just like a, you know, it just warms me a bit. It's just like, oh, you know, it's like, it's a nice memory. It's a good game as well. And so when I got rid of most of my Mega Drive games, that's one of the few that I kept. Because uh-huh. I just thought this one is special, this is special to me. Yeah. yeah, I've got to keep it. Yeah, I understand, man. Like I, I have that. I have those kind of memories with my friend too. Way back when, during the arcade days of old, uh, there's an arcade machine with uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two. Uh, me and my friend, we went to that place and play that game like religiously i was kind of playing it like crazy and a a guy came in and we kind of challenged each other because okay i kind of knew who he was because he was keeping using this one character iceman and yeah we played a bit and my friend came in too and tried to play a bit and in the end um we kind of grew out of it not really grew out of it like the arcades here they gotten well 
let's just say console gaming got in the way. And just remembering my, me and my friend playing that game was just awesome. And then now, unfortunately for him, he got into a terrible accident where he can't use his left arm anymore. So just thinking about it, like, oh man, like those, those were the days where I got to play games with him. And now he can't play games. All he can do is just, well, play Clash of Clans. So, yeah. Oh, Craigie, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's sad when things like that happen. Uh, well, sad's a bit of an understatement, but. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's not that, well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really understating his, um, dilemma, but still, at least he has a job, he's stable, he has a family, and, well, he's doing good for himself, except he can't use his left arm to play video games. He still can play the Wii, so that's a bonus, I think. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, I suppose it's all just about finding that game that works, you know, and, and adapting to it as well, particularly, you know, if you're not able to play certain games. And the Wii's great for that sort of thing. The Wii, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it. I don't play it often when I, ha- when I have had it. If I'm having, like, a serious game session, I'll probably play something on the, the PlayStation or the Xbox, you know. But if we're wanting to just have really good fun and have a few drinks, it is the Wii every single time. The good thing about it is that as a console, you can just have fun with and you're playing Mario Party or you're playing um, Tiger Woods or wherever it is, you know, and you've got a drink as well. You're just kind of going, you know what, this is just us having a bit of a laugh and enjoying a game for what it is and just kind of going, like, and it's like, we're both terrible. We're both going, like, I can't, Pat, we'll just try doing it a bit softer. I can't. And, you know, and it's just enjoying it and just having that kind of, you know, you're not worrying about winning or you're not even worrying about doing that well. It's just kind of, oh, this is a bit of a laugh. It's a bit of escapism. And I, I do admire that about the Wii. Yeah, yeah, true. That. I mean, Wii has its games, but overall it's a family machine, to put it at best. Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. It is a family machine, but... That works for it. I think that's, you know, being a foul machine does it well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, anyway, we've been talking about games for a bit now. Like, <laughs> put a mic in front of us, give us a gaming topic, we'll talk for hours. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, just stop us now before we end up taking over the whole show again. <laughs> yeah, no, we're hosting the show, so we can talk about whatever we want, but we're near the end, so yeah, we need to head off. So anyway, um, before I end the show, I want to give out a special shout out to a very special guy going by the name of CRC Brony. I got an insider info that his birthday is going to be on March 7th. So happy birthday, man. Like, hope you enjoy the show and you have a good time. Like, here's us to you. Happy birthday, man. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, CRC. Enjoy yourself. I hope you have a good one. Uh, He's been sending us emails, so that's just awesome. And... I'm not going to tell you where I got this info from. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetiebot will tweet about this show. Retweet it. And also talk to you guys. You can also catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy is video games. Yes, it's the seasons. Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me at facebook.com for slash uh, Kyle McCall, where I've been posting about the the convention. I've been doing a lot about that. Um, no doubt that we post there in the future about my writing, that I'm, I'm beginning to get back into working on the novel. Stuff on Creative Vibes and the MBS will be there as well. And of course, if you want to see Creative Vibes, you can uh, check out our Facebook page for the High on Bronies at facebook.com for slash High on Bronies, or our YouTube channel, which is High on Bronies, where our episodes go out every week. And this week it will be, I believe, a special episode on Heartwarming Con with the ever-lovable James Cork and Yon Lines. So make sure to check that out. Please do. We, we, please, please watch us. We, 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 we would like to see you, please. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want a more comprehensive review of Heartwarming Con, go listen to Creative Vibes because, well, you got one side of the conversation. If you enjoy what you hear, go listen to another two more people talk about the convention too. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Kyle McCall, aka The Nice Scribe. And we'll catch you next week with another amazing episode of the NBS Show. See you guys later. See ya. See ya.